one of you guys is lying about having an authentic Chanel bag. We need to talk about luxury brands' current obsession with selling replica styled fashion like this. Hey guys, it's Wadi. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up if you are also interested in the topic of luxury brands selling and creating designing replica styled fashion this includes stuff such as like excessive amounts of logos creating basic simple designs and slapping on their logo um creating things where stereotypically wouldn't think a designer would go out the way to create sometimes to do things to do with like collaborations and collaborating with other brands that just you would not expect a luxury brand to collab with. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm going to go in detail in this video. We're going to talk about how the economy can definitely have an effect on why luxury brands are behaving this way. We're going to talk about um, counterfeits, why that could also be a reason why luxury brands are behaving this way. What can luxury brands do to deter people from buying counterfeits and are they going to do anything to deter people from buying counterfeits i will also talk about my opinions and what i think yeah so if you're interested keep on watching and if you haven't be sure to subscribe be sure to subscribe be sure to subscribe okay so let me explain what i'm talking about so the other week i went on to thread styling's instagram actually no i didn't search up the instagram i was on my explore page and i saw these Chanel wellies with a Chanel logo. It was black wellies with a Chanel logo. I clicked on it because instantly I was like, oh my gosh, not the not the DH gate girlies on my explore page. Again, they're already in my inbox asking me to collab and now they're on my explore page. Like, no. Um, and when I clicked on it, I realized that this is Thread Styling's Instagram. And these boots are not replicas and they're actually authentic Chanel boots. And I was like, huh. Chanel are really selling rubber wellies with a white logo on top. Black rubber wellies with a white logo on top. Um, I don't even want to begin to look for how much this price is. So I went through the Instagram and then I also came across a number of items. I saw a Chanel coat with the Chanel logos and I was so disturbed. I was like, kind of like, I've been on holiday to Barcelona and I it just reminded me of walking through the the market and seeing all the counterfeit items like this is the type of thing i will see so i was like so surprised when i saw that like chanel was selling these designs because i automatically thought they were fakes um i googled the chanel wellies and the chanel wellies were 1.6k and while googling the chanel wellies i landed onto a reddit page where someone was sharing their dupes of the replicas they found of the rubbish chanel wellies and then that led me to remember that a few months ago when I was researching what items people tend to buy the most replicas, um, accessories and shoes were one of the top ones. And now it made me realize why, because if a lot of luxury brands are selling canvas shoes, rubber shoes for 1.6K, 2k maybe even 3k who in their right mind the everyday person is going to save up to go and buy that fear is like if luxury brands keep going down this route like more and more people are just going to go and get fakes because fakes have already been selling these sort of things for the longest time so, moving on to what that led me on to after uh, i then afterwards began researching how much the counterfeit market is worth because if this is what i'm seeing brands sell i'm like oh, counterfeits have been doing this for a long time because it's giving alibaba it's giving dh gate when i'm seeing some of these styles that chanel are selling um so an article I had run into basically spoke about how buyers are desperate to show off their luxury brands while at the same time they're unwilling to pay for such high expensive items. Therefore, dupes are the perfect solution. Got her to open up and show us inside. Hello, I'm Jamie Chua and welcome to my closet. The counterfeit business is worth more than $500 billion. So one of you guys is lying about 
having an authentic Chanel bag. And it's not me because I don't have a Chanel bag at all. Um, and it also means that the counterfeit market is getting really, really good at get, doing replicas. But when we're having brands like Gucci sell a cotton shirt, um, a cotton shirt with a Gucci logo on, you know, that's not difficult to replicate. But with designs that are more minimal, basic, and using just generic fabrics, people are just gonna buy a lot of counterfeits for. So when reading this article, I also read um, about one way that luxury brands could eliminate counterfeits. Okay, so how can luxury brands eliminate people from buying counterfeits because 500 billion is a lot of money so the article actually suggested that luxury brands can lower their prices or even become even more com of a p competitive price to these counterfeits brands like dhk um but obviously the article then went on to say how this is highly unlikely because then the luxury brand will no longer become luxury, become accessible, they will no longer become um, appealing to the upper class. Uh, which, you know, it's true, it's the reason they're a luxury brand. My thoughts are if luxury brands did reduce their prices to match counterfeit brands, counterfeits will reduce their prices even more because it's a doggy dog world out there, counterfeits, the counterfeit world the dupe world it's kind of like you know it's basically the black market so they don't really care about quality they don't really care about lowering their prices no one's going to comment on their instagram being like you know how much are you paying your workers how are you making these stuff so cheap like it's already it already involves a lot of exploitation anyways so they would probably just lower their prices even more and still make a lot of profit whereas luxury brands cannot risk their reputation being kind of tarnished where people are like okay so you were charging us this much before and now you're lowering like what's going on like they have a lot more on their plate and a lot more eyes watching them than the black market because people already know that market is sketchy anyways um so it i don't think could be great for their reputation but for different reasons to to this um so yes what is my suggestion that these brands do well brands have been doing this for ages they have certain items or certain things that they market towards the everyday person so a lot of luxury brands have perfume ranges sunglasses um things such as like scarves or twillies or brooches brooches um that are basically targeted for the everyday person because they're at a rate where people can kind of afford but not really afford because you can't really if you can't buy it again not really afford because they're still quite expensive um so yes i think another thing that we're seeing is collaborations with luxury brands are making collaborations with fast fashion stores such as h&m which i'll get onto in a bit uh, so there's different things uh, that these luxury brands are trying luxury brands do want to be appealing to the everyday consumer because there's more people that are not wealthy than that are wealthy so they can't only be out here targeting wealthy people because they just I, I just don't think they'll be able to survive as much it's the everyday person that makes luxury brands the most money um I think I can't remember which brand in particular but I remember I was researching a brand they make the majority of their money from selling perfumes that was a luxury brand because their perfumes are more at an accessible rate compared to their bags and their clothing items. So a lot of brands don't make the luxury brands don't make the majority of their money from their clothes because only a small percentage of people can actually afford that. Um, okay, so moving on to luxury brands and collaboration, luxury brands collaborating with retail brands. So a great example of luxury brands collaborating with the retail brands or lower price brands is and Louis Vuitton's collaboration with um, Supreme, Karl Lagerfeld's collaboration with H&M, there was another brand also that collaborated with H&M, was it Ghani? We also saw the tragic Tiffany & Co collaboration with Nike. So although these luxury brands are aware that consumers of the retail or like lower end brand wouldn't be able to afford Tiffany, wouldn't be able to afford Chanel, 
they just want the consumer to be like aware that that brand exists and maybe in the future they can aspire to buy something from the brand itself instead of just from the collaboration so that's why we're seeing a lot of collaborations because believe it or not like these designer brands are trying everything in their power to become appealing to the younger generation and um, the everyday person so yeah, there will be at a point where people have collab fatigue. I think we're already getting it because when we're looking at what these designers are creating in these collaborations, notice how a lot of the pieces are very simplistic. Again, it's so that the everyday person can actually wear these pieces on a day-to-day -day basis, so like the Tiffany & Co and Nike collab. The shoes were tragic, but then I also have to remember that like the everyday person going to work going to school they don't want to wear something too daring because it's just not going to be practical so i think that's why the designs are so simplistic for these collaborations um just so people don't feel like they have to go outside of their comfort zone now moving on to talking about how the state of the economy is affecting what designs luxury brands are deciding to go forward with so in 2021 we saw an increase in retail spending due to the pent-up demand of the year of covid where we were all at home so there is a term for this called revenge spending revenge spending refers to the urge to spend money to make up for the loss of time so a lot of people feel like they lost time during covid so when covid ended people feel like they didn't spend money and they had just had this urge to just spend as much as they could and i feel like now that's sort of plateaued consumer habits during the pandemic were focused on comfort sustainability and engage with social and political issues hence why loungewear was such a thing but now let's talk more about post-covid so color began became to have a comeback um and then now we're in the recession um and generally speaking recessions have led to experimentation from designers in hopes that the experimentation will bring consumers to shop um, so some of the designs that I mentioned are kind of like outrageous like when I mentioned the Chanel coat with the logo that had blue and black and all sorts of things um, Fashion designers are hoping within creating stuff like that people will be able to shop more hopefully um, And experimenting with things that they traditionally maybe didn't do or didn't put out like I would have never imagined a rubber Chanel selling a rubber welly with a logo that big I guess that's experimenting for them because I was like, that cannot be a Chanel design. Same with Hermes with their jumper with the two H logos on each pocket side. Like, yeah, I would have never imagined Hermes. When I look through Hermes' Instagram and when I have always looked through their website, that's not the sort of designs I'm used to seeing. So again, this is these brands trying to experiment and trying to get and speak to the younger consumer. So, in conclusion, overall, I think we're seeing luxury brands fight for their life to stay relevant during this recession period by creating items that they believe will sell to the consumers. So guys, let me know down below what you think about this. What do you think luxury brands should do to combat people from buying counterfeits? Do you see a problem with counterfeits? Um, are you happy with the designs these luxury brands are creating? A lot of people on my TikTok were feeling like that these brands are ripping the everyday consumer off. And I think a lot of people are realizing that. And I agree. Maybe if I get off ever to a level of wealth, I'm not going to feel ripped off paying 1.6k because, quite frankly, I'd be able to afford something even more expensive. But for the time being, for my place in life right now, it definitely would be a rip off to pay that amount for rubber boots especially firsthand okay so i'll see you guys next week give the video a thumbs up and i hope you enjoyed